2014. May I please have the attendance? Mrs. Bealey? Here. Mr. Chiazzo? Here. Mrs. Lang? Here. Mrs. Massengill? Here. Mrs. Murphy? Here. Ms. Perry? Here. Mrs. Shea? Here. Ms. Murray? Ms. Agar? Would you please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance? <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And this evening, Dr. Entwistle, are there any adjustments to the agenda? Yes, I think uh, considering all of our guests, we're going to move um, recognition up um, right after adjustments. Okay. And um, this evening we have uh, three important items of recognition. Um, the first is the Scarborough High School Academic Decathlon and uh, a little trip that they took recently um, with some uh, good results. Uh, the second being uh, retirements. And if Mr. Thurlow is here this evening, um, he had a couple of uh, his students that he wanted to recognize. So we start with um, Academic Decathlon. Right. And we have the, uh, our, our coach. Yes. Good evening. Welcome. This one on over here? Should be. Hello. Yes, it is. Awesome. Well, I'd like to thank you for recognizing us tonight. We've got 50% uh, of our team here, which is pretty good, given commitments that seniors have uh, with graduation and pending and all that. Uh, and they're each going to come up and say a quick word. All right, Alec. Sure. <laughs> Quick word um, to express whatever thanks that they would like to express. Uh, but I would just like to thank the community for supporting us this year. It was a really challenging year for us um, in terms of getting everything together because the trip was in Hawaii, which you might think, that doesn't sound just challenging. That sounds fabulous. Mm -hmm. And it is fabulous. Not going to lie about that. It's awesome. If you haven't gone to Hawaii, you should try to figure out how to get there someday because it's amazing. That said, though, it's a long ways away. If you ever flown to California, it's seven hours. You're only halfway there. It's another seven hours over nothing but ocean. So it's a long trip, and to get 11 students and two coaches there, it was very expensive. It required a lot of fundraising and pull a lot of resources together from the community, from parents, all sorts of ideas, different things. I tried a new thing to myself this year called crowdfunding, involving using the internet and that kind of magic to uh, raise money, and it was really successful, which I thought was good. So I kind of, you know, getting better at doing fundraising, that kind of thing. The team did spectacularly this year with a third place win in Division Two, which really made us happy. Uh, the competition is very, very steep, and Division Two is very competitive. To get on that top place, you know, one, two, three board, is a career best for me in uh, seven years, perhaps. Uh, we've got fourth a couple times, just so close. But this time we actually made it, so we were so thrilled. Not only that, but the individual students just killed it. And I think we walked away with 12 plus medals. Meddling at nationals is very difficult. Students have to can medal an individual, as an individual person, in individual academic subjects. But the competition is fierce. So to get a medal was amazing. To get as many as we did this year is spectacular. So they really pulled out all the stops. Really made me happy. Great. So you guys want to come up real quick and just say something? That would be awesome. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So my name is Isabel. Um, We'll introduce ourselves. But basically, we just want to thank like the school board and everyone here, because without you guys, we would not have been able to go on this trip. And it was such an amazing opportunity, because you don't ever, you don't get a trip to Hawaii handed to you. You have to work for it and everything. And to go there and meet so many different people, we met people from California and London and Wisconsin. And we made friends with all of them. We're like friends on Facebook. And we get to share what we're doing and stuff. I mean, it might sound silly, but it was really cool, because it's like national. And so you meet everyone from all over the country. And you learn about like Hawaiian culture and stuff. So it's an amazing opportunity. And it's like once in a lifetime. So to do that like with friends, with a team, and we're representing Maine to be there and be able to tell everyone, yeah, we're from Maine. And they'll be like, 
where is that? Is that part of Canada? I'm like, no, no, we have plumbing, we have, we speak English. So it was just really cool to be able to represent us and know we are here for something and know that we meant something. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have much to add to what Isabel said, but I just wanted to thank the community and the school board again for everything that you've all done to help us get there. Going to nationals and winning third place was a dream come true, and we couldn't have done it without you all. And your name, what your name? Uh, Laura Henny, sorry. <laughs> thank you. Uh, hello, my name's Alex Clary. I'm one of the seniors on the team, and this is my second um, national event with the team. And I want to say I'm very thankful to the town for giving us those additional $2,000 because with a total coming up over $20,000, that $2,000 just got us to Hawaii, which is very important to us and we're very thankful for. We were really that close to not going. And I'd also um, like to thank my team here for working the extra mile because this is Scarborough's first national title in 12 years in anything. So it's a big deal for us to represent our town in front of the entire country. It's a really big deal to help kind of add to Scarborough's legacy and add to our new set of coaches' first national titles. So I'd like to thank the whole team. <coughs> and I'd like to give a special thank you to our hardest worker on the team who sadly couldn't make it today, Beatrice Brower, who went the extra mile in studying for, in studying for it, actually came out as top scholastic in the whole country for Division II, which is a remarkable achievement with... Um, and she took home many other awards, such as the Chris and Cabrera and Spear Award, for doing this accomplishment with her illness. So it's a big deal for our team in particular to make it this far. So I'd like to thank everyone for their support. And again, thank my team for working very hard, too. Thank you. Hi, my name's Melissa Ertman, and I just want to reiterate, basically, I think they've covered it pretty well, um, but just that we're so thankful for the community support. Um, and especially we couldn't have done it without our coaches. Um, thanking Mr. York and Mr. Davis, who's not here. Um, just the support that they've given us and um, how far we've been able to go because of them. Um, I mean, it's roughly, would you say, 700 pages of work? More. More than 700 pages <laughs> um, of, of work. So it's definitely difficult, and we definitely worked very hard. Um, and just the support that we've gotten from everyone all around um, has really made a difference, and we're very thankful. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Alec Lang, and um, considering what's been said, there's not that much new to add. I want to thank the um, school board, I want to thank the town, and I want to thank the coaches and the team. I mean, after all, we've spent roughly maybe hundreds of hours studying about World War II for the competition, and it was really great, oh World War I, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and it was really great to see that, and it was really great to see that end up paying off in the end. Perhaps, perhaps, Alec, next year's challenge will be World War I, so, yeah. or World War II, I'm sorry, World War II, there, I just did it too, okay, so maybe you're preparing for that now, <laughs> excellent. Or maybe I just can't count. <laughs> We're glad to have heard from you, and, and I don't know if any of my fellow board members have anything that they wish to add. Donna? I just want to congratulate you. You did an outstanding job. You make us very proud. Would you just stand up and say the medals you won, please, individually? Can't remember. Yeah. There's too many. <laughs> the state tournament, I took gold in economics, gold in social science, gold in art, um, bronze in speech, and the second highest scoring varsity within the state of Maine. And then at nationals, I took gold in art. Thank you. Excellent. Good. Oh. At the state competition, I took, I think, bronze, I want to say bronze in. I got bronze in art and I got a silver in science. Excellent. Right. At the state competition, I got eight individual medals, and at the national competition, I was the highest overall scoring student for me. Wow. Congratulations. <laughs>
Um, at the state competition, I got a bronze in social science, a silver in science, and a gold in speech. Excellent. Very nice. So, I don't remember what I got in the state competition, but despite not being able to count, I got a gold medal in math and math. <laughs> I think they deserve a round of applause. Again, thank you for coming and sharing that with us. We, we appreciate all your efforts as the coach, and we know that you had a co-coach as well. So um, we do realize that that's a lot of time that's spent on the student's behalf as well as on the advisor's uh, behalf. So. We do appreciate the efforts and, and sincerely are happy that you came back to report to us how things went. So thank you again. Thank you, Mr. York. Thank you. Uh, we'll move into uh, retirements. We have a, a list, and I believe that everyone knows when they go up to the podium. <laughs> Sarah knows, and she's first. It's awesome. Good evening, and I'm Sarah Redman, the Transportation Supervisor for the Scarborough School Bus Department. Unfortunately, my two retirees are not able to be here tonight, but I would like to recognize David Gardner for 22 years of service and Cleon Nelson for 14 years of service. Both were hard, dedicated workers, always putting the kids' safety first, and they will truly be missed next year. I will make sure that they get the gifts from you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thanks, Sarah. Sarah. Please send our thank you to both of the gentlemen. I certainly will. Thanks. Joanne. I'm next. Uh, uh, Todd Jepson could not be here this evening, but he has uh, something. Uh, he has written something for me to read in regards to the uh, people who are retiring. Um, one, first is Darlene Hunt. Uh, Darlene has been a custodian with uh, Scarborough School Department since uh, 2004 in several different schools throughout the district. Darlene has a positive, cooperative, and help and helpful. Um, uh, personality and we appreciate all the work that she has done to keep our schools looking great. Her flexibility and willingness to do anything she was asked always made other employees jobs <coughs> easier. And the next person is Mr. Skillings, Jean Skillings, will you please stand? Um, Jean has served as a maintenance person for 22 years with the Scarborough School Department since 1992. His historical knowledge of every school building has helped to solve many maintenance mysteries. His creative and technical skills allowed him to fix, repair, or fabricate anything to make people's lives easier. I have always said if you give Gene some twine, a roll of duct tape, and a Swiss army knife, he could probably figure out a way to build a car and make it run. We appreciate all your hard work and service to the Scarborough School Department. Say words. She's got to be missed. <laughs> Come by here and shake our hand. <laughs> Thank you, Jean. Thank you. Thank you, Jean. Enjoy yourself. Thank you, Jean. Okay, wow. You'll be missed. Oh, yeah. Thank you. I'll forget a lot. <laughs> I have two retirees from School Nutrition, uh, Kathy Murphy, who could not be here tonight, who put in 10 years at Blue Point. She absolutely loved what she do, did, and she would love the kids. She was their grandmother. She was their caretaker. Um, the second person is Joanne Mills. She's worked at <laughs> Wentworth for eight years. She is the person that fixed, like Jean, could fix anything, put together anything from the directions when we're all standing there going, uh, and she did it. She also was our decorator, our seamstress, and our bulletin board person. She is really missed. So, thank you.
so much. Enjoy yourself. Thank you. Best wishes. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Allison Marchese, Director of Special Services, and I have three people to recognize tonight. The first being Becky Love. Becky, come on up. You make me cry. No. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Becky has been in the field of education for the last 27 years. Her first half of her career was as a preschool teacher and a de developmental therapist. Uh, in her last 14 years have been at our Pleasant Hill School as the solo one and only special education teacher. Uh, it is not much better for any five-year-old to be able to call their teacher Mrs. Love. <laughs> <laughs> She has provided the full range of special education programming as being a small school, the one-room schoolhouse, she did it all. She even um, filled in one year as our uh, consulting teacher and transitioned in all of our kindergarten students who had special needs. Um, when asked about Becky, all will say what an integral part of the school community she is, whether it's in the classroom opening up milk cartons in the cafeteria <laughs> or pushing kids on the swing. Uh, she, she will be sorely missed. One uh, additional piece that we should all know about uh, Becky is the flourishing uh, garden at Pleasant Hill School is a result of her TLC. <laughs> so I wish you much fun on the golf course, <laughs> fabulous wins on the tennis court, and don't remember, you promise you'll sub for me next year. <laughs> Thank you so much. Very good. Congratulations, Becky. Thank you, Becky. Thank you. The next two people um, are unable to be here tonight because they are at their own surprise retirement dinner. So I think by now they've realized it was for them. Uh, so the first is Brenda Marneau. She has been an educational technician for us for the last 27 years. Um, more specifically, she has worked in our academic life skills classroom at the Wentworth School for the last 27 years. When people describe Brenda, they say she is a self-starter, thorough, dependable, and conscientious. She is equally effective in supporting students in the special ed classroom as well as their mainstream classroom setting. Her intuitive skills always had her one step ahead. Brenda has had the unique opportunity to work with the same special education teacher for the last 27 years, Nancy Kirby. Brenda was her right-hand lady. She kept the paperwork and the classroom preparations running smoothly. I should also note that Brenda has other talents as well, as she was the piano accompanist for the Wentworth concerts for the last 10 years. So we wish her a very well-deserved vacation, which is called retirement. <laughs> and my last uh, person of the night is Nancy Kirby. Uh, where do you begin describing a person who attended the University of Maine at Farmington to become a teacher and then got her first teaching job with us and has been here for 41 years. <laughs> Pretty significant. She has lived through four name changes, though she always did the same job, whether it be called the special class, a resource room, a self-contained classroom, or an academic life skills. But she has never changed. She is a passionate champion for her students in addressing their academic, social, uh, and behavioral needs. As one person said, under her guidance and leadership, I have seen children become self-directed, responsible, eager citizens who for the first time can deal with themselves and their environment in a positive manner. Others have described her as frank, firm, friendly, and I need to add feisty. <laughs> A very small sampling of Nancy's contributions include her initiation of the West Wing Wing Ding, uh, which is where all students showcased their work. Uh, in addition, her twin sister arrives every Halloween, and uh, students 
highly covet the invitation to the special candy, candlelight dinners with Mrs. Kirby. So stories of the positive impact she has made with students and their families will certainly live on for the next 41 years. My name is Peggy Wallace, and I am an academic support teacher at Eight Corner School, one of our K-2 schools. And I am here to recognize Nancy Mitchell, a first grade teacher at our school. She is unable to be here tonight because of other festivities as well. Um, Nancy has been a teacher for a very long time. She taught for 22 years in SAD 40 and joined Eight Corners 15 years ago. I consider Nancy a friend and a colleague, and I have just a few things about her that I most admire. Um, she is such an accomplished teacher. She greets each student individually every single morning, no matter what is going on. She engages students through music and movement her room is right next to mine, so I hear a lot of the songs and happiness. She is a masterful read aloud teacher. Uh, she has voices, inflection, and excitement when she reads books, and the children in her room just love reading. She enjoys being a part of a collegial team she has always been a, someone who wants to work with a team of teachers. Uh, she will be greatly missed at Eight Corners. I am here to recognize Nancy Coffin, who is unable to be here this evening. Nancy has worked as a library ed tech for 18 years, opening this middle school library. She has a historical and comprehensive knowledge of our library, knowing every single book in the collection, because she purchased every book in the collection. <laughs> Mrs. Coffin is a role model and very patient teacher with her library leaders, a group she started. Her compassion, Positive energy and calm demeanor enables her to connect with students, staff, and parents. Mrs. Coffin is leaving an enormous role to fill. She has been, we do not have a librarian, she has been our librarian. She has done an amazing job. We would really like to upload everything in her brain because she, we, we will not be able to replace her. We will miss her. She's done a fabulous job. Thank you, Nancy. So I don't know if I should begin with the fact that I have been told by my peers to not be as long as I typically am. <laughs> Superintendent is nodding. Um, and because you'll notice my name is also on the goodbye list, I really don't think I need to follow all these instructions <laughs> until this evening. When have you ever thought you needed to follow the Superintendent? So I would like to invite Christine Koch up here. And as she's joining us, I want you to think Kaleidoscope as I introduce to you retiree Christine Koch. Christine's career is the sum of many parts. She has her BS in psychology, a master's in uh, literacy education. She has certifications in special education and GT. No, she said. But listen to this. Spanning 27 years, Christine began her career in Auburn, Maine. And in 1987, she was hired as a grade three through five GT math teacher at Bessie and Wentworth schools. For the next 15 years, Christine taught within the multi-age program at Wentworth, with the exception of one year hiatus when she did special education in Washington State. 
Now, think about that kaleidoscope. Did I mention to you that uh, at all through this time, uh, when she was a Wentworth lead teacher for five years, and in this capacity, Christine guided the leadership team to support classroom teachers in their delivery of English language arts, which was her specialty. In 2004, Christine became a literacy support teacher, realizing her long-term goal of focusing on her own passion, which was teaching reading and writing. In 2012, Monique Culbertson and I gave a little tug, trying to pull her away from the classroom and all the students she loved, and she did accept a position of K-5 instructional coach for our new modeling. Uh, in her case, it was the ELA program. She worked with staff and school leaders in all three primary schools, as well as Wentworth. She has been instrumental in evaluating the curriculum, materials used with students, and directing the types of assessment and monitoring tools used to inform student learning, which is our major priority. Christine has had a key role in developing and delivering professional development for K-5 staff. She has been a standard by which all aspire. In her spare time, Christine introduced and organized what the Wentworth Storytelling Festival. And a few years ago, you had the pleasure of some of her students, one in particular, coming and presenting one of their story, uh, stories to you. This annual feature, uh, featured event caused a professional storytellers to clamor at our doors to come and work with her and do workshops with students. And we are in our 17-year performance level of our storytelling troubadours. Christine was also instrumental in developing and serving as a mentor teacher from 2008 to 2012. She taught at USM summer reading clinic, serving as a supervisor for grad students. And that work greatly influenced a contribution to Scarborough, where she helped with others to create the Scarborough Summer Reading Academy, which is now entering its ninth summer. Phew. I did it as fast as I could. <laughs> if I were to pre predict what retirement might look like for Christine, I would venture to see travel to England and Spain to join family, creating Oma, am I saying that? Yes, which is grandmother, time with her grandkids, and hiking in the Adirondacks with her husband and the dog. And by the way, that would be in her first week of retirement. <laughs> so congratulations to Christine. Thank you for your many contributions. And uh, we have some big shoes to fill when you walk out the door, my dear. <laughs> Christine, thank you. Thank you so much, Christine. Good work. Thanks, Christine. Wish you very well. Thank you. My daughter Angela, the storyteller, she shared. Marsha Blaisdell, will you join me? So, lots of people in our school system, in any school system USA, can find a problem. Not everyone has the knack, however, for solving it. So how do you fix it when it's broke? You call Marsha Blaisdell. A different kind of fix it. <laughs> Marsha has logged 30 years in public and private education. She earned a BS in elementary education and a master's in elementary curriculum. Marsha also holds certification in special education, a secret she has kept. <laughs> Marsha joined Wentworth Intermediate School as a fifth grade teacher in August of 2000. Marsha was recognized to be a leader among peers. Being a fact checker and a problem solver, she was selected as a Wentworth lead teacher for a position which she held for nine years. Marsha has accepted increased responsibilities over the years in school management, curriculum, and as a liaison in the instructional coach model for foreign language, science, and social studies. Marsha has served on math and social studies curriculum committees. In the collaborative team teaching environment and classroom, Marsha's skills were tapped by peers. If Marsha was in charge, I always was assured that the nails were in the ship before it sailed. <laughs> She brought to the school a rich background based in strong standards with the model that every student can do it. 
to that end, Marta instructed, she remediated, and sometimes cajoled a wary learner towards success. I recently, and she doesn't know about this, I recently connected with one of Marsha's former students who worked very hard to wear her down before heading to the middle school. The student asked me if Mrs. Blaisdell was still teaching at Wentworth. When I explained that she was retiring this year, the student said, boy, I really did give her a hard time. <laughs> and then he paused, wrinkled his brow, and said, I wish I hadn't. So you don't always know the impact that you've had. Marsha's accomplishments are many, especially when you take into account that she has positively influenced the intellectual and motivational well-being of 700, I'm sorry, three, 273 fifth graders in her time with us. So congratulations, Marsha, and thank you for sharing your skills and talents with Scarborough. As you begin your new adventure into retirement, I have but one question. What's next? I'm thinking pickleball championships. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. I hope so. Enjoy it. Congratulations. I'm not sure who created the order, but there's no way that I should be following Anne Mary. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to make you look real good, Dr. Ant Whistle. <laughs> and I'm going to sorely miss that beautiful smile and that positive energy. I'm here to recognize two retirees from the high school. Unfortunately, both of them couldn't make it here tonight because of family obligations, but um, some of their colleagues took the time to meet with me and share with me some, what I think are just some wonderful comments. And having only been principal for less than a year, I thought it only fitting that I share those comments with you because they know these two individuals best. I'll be reading to you first the comments that have been given to me for Christine Lawrence, who is one of our science teachers. Christy started at Scarborough High School on October 31st, 1994, and has worked there for 20 years. Members of her department have this to say. Christy has been a hardworking, dedicated team player for the science department here at Scarborough High School. She has always been willing to volunteer for the tough assignments, take on any challenges no one else wanted to, and to help her colleagues whenever needed. In the classroom, Chrissy has been a dedicated professional who cares deeply about her students and works hard to provide them with a world-class education. She has always been available for students and creates an atmosphere of mutual trust and respect in the classroom. Perhaps most telling are the comments by her coworkers in the science department. Here are some of those quotes. Christy is a true team player. She is always willing. She is dedicated and hardworking. She always puts her students first. Chrissy is an excellent mentor. I've learned a ton from her. She has a great sense of humor and a positive attitude. I've loved working with her. I will miss Christine's infectious laugh and wittiness. Chrissy is a kind, thoughtful, reliable, dedicated worker at Scarborough High School. She is very kind and patient with students and enjoys them immensely. In short, Christy has been an invaluable member of the faculty here at Scarborough High School. We will miss her dearly and wish her all the best. Signed, SHS Science Department. So on behalf of Scarborough High School, I want to congratulate Christine Lawrence. <laughs> Second member of our, of our school that's going to be retiring is Andy Gohegan. Andy is one of our math teachers. Again, comments from the math department. Andy started teaching at Scarborough High School on August 29th, 2005, and has been there for almost nine years. He was the math team co-advisor with Ben Seiler. He's taken the initiative to research, propose, and establish a financial algebra course. He's provided rigorous and challenging curriculum for Algebra II honor students that's extended well beyond the curriculum and syllabus. 
He's provided the leadership needed to continue Scarborough High School's participation in the American Mathematics Competition. He is math team coach extraordinaire, recruiting, encouraging, and developing a competitive team. A very thoughtful colleague, contributing to a well-considered point of view for all the department discussions and curriculum work. He's a teacher whose interest in his studies provided them the support they needed to succeed. On a personal level, he enjoys tennis, swimming, traveling, and his summer cottage in New Hampshire. He's a kind, funny, and generous teacher. He is one of the last people that you will see leaving the parking lot at the end of the day and tells me that it's because he doesn't want to get home first so he doesn't have to make dinner. <laughs> I have a sneaky suspicion it's for other reasons, but that's his sense of humor. Some of the quotes from his department members. Over the many years I've worked with Andy, I've always found him to be a wonderful colleague, very kind and courteous, and always the consummate professional. professional. I will miss having him in our math department, and I am sure the students will miss him also. He's been a real asset in the study center, and it's been real working out problems with Algebra 2 and Pre-Calc. On behalf of Scarborough High School, Andy, we thank you for your dedication and service, and we will miss you. Um, I have the pleasure of um, recognizing my dear colleague, Anne Murray Dexter. Come on up here. And I'd like to model for Mrs. Dexter what a three to four minute recognition looks like. Um, Anne Mary is a graduate of UNH and of USM. Uh, she began with Scarborough Schools in 1987. Is that right? After a brief period as a teacher in Scarborough, she became principal of all three of the K-2 schools, and that happened in 1989. She remained in the position until 1996. How did you do that? Mm. <laughs> uh, before becoming principal at Wentworth Intermediate School. While at Wentworth, she was very active in advocating for a new school with the first Wentworth building project, uh, which was unfortunately uh, defeated in a referendum that happened in 2006. Well, those of us who know Anne Mary knows that she will not be defeated. <laughs> so that defeat only gave Anne Mary more energy and more drive to ensure that a new school would come to fruition during her um, her tenure in Scarborough, and she has done that, and for that we are very grateful, and you can clap for that <laughs> right now. So for Wentworth, and for oh so many reasons, uh, we will always be indebted to Anne Mary. From all of the school leaders, staff, students, we wish to, we wish Anne Mary only the best as she heads out into her next venture, which will include likely, she has her lovely family here, taking care of her grandbabies. Uh, for me, Anne Mary has been a terrific colleague. I think of her as being a great leader, and most important, she's just a great person. I have uh, so enjoyed strategizing with you and our educational philosophical discussions. They've been very stimulating and very fun. So how fortunate I have been, how fortunate we all have been to have had you in our work lives. Um, and just a note, uh, Anne Mary's husband is here, Dennis. Uh, shortly, we are going to be releasing her <laughs> from supervisory duty here in Scarborough. And uh, she will then be taking over as your full-time supervisor <laughs> at home. And so we do want to wish Dennis well. <laughs> Thanks so much, Anne Mary. Congratulations. Very fun that you're here.
Stay here long enough, you, everybody works for you. <laughs> um, I believe that Mr. Thurlow is not here this evening to recognize his students, so what I would request is that anybody who wishes to leave, we're going to take a five-minute recess, um, that you may do so if you so desire. If not, you're welcome to stay and, and yes. you know, <laughs> see the rest of the meeting if you'd like, but we want to give you that opportunity. So.
Yeah. Are we no, ready? No, 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 just okay. No. So we will resume the yeah. meeting now. Just, and oh, this is see, we've done our recognition. Where are we? Oh, the superintendent's report. Um, right, I just have a, a, a couple of brief, brief comments. And um, actually, um, Monique Culbertson is going to uh, do an NCLB um, FY15 application update. Uh, but before uh, Monique steps up, I would be remiss if I didn't uh, say publicly how terribly disappointed I am in the action that was taken uh, by the town council last night. Um, our, uh, the, the school board's budget has been reduced um, again. Uh, t uh, by $324,000 after being uh, sliced and diced and, um, and basically uh, reduced to the point of essentially holding us um, in place and uh, certainly not moving ahead. As I think folks know, uh, a number of years ago, positions were lost, and at that time, o over 40 positions were lost. Um, the efforts that we have made in my tenure here for three years has been to begin to restore some of what was lost in critical areas like the arts and music and, and, uh, and world language. And unfortunately, um, that is such a significant challenge. I believe uh, that, um, that absorbing uh, this amount of money in terms of uh, an additional cut uh, to the budget that was uh, uh, brought forth uh, for referendum by the school board is going to be extraordinarily challenging and it is going to be felt across the district. And uh, I find that to be disappointing. If my team members out there, uh, they've worked so hard uh, to uh, continue the improvement. We see the improvement that we, are, that we are making. Even with just small, select, incremental investments, we see every, everywhere we plant, there is growth. And what we need to be doing is growing and not standing still. And so, um, again, uh, I find it to be terribly disappointing. Um, and I don't mean that to be your introduction, uh, Monique, because I'm <laughs> delighted, actually, to, to uh, introduce you. And I know that we're just pretty excited about hearing <laughs> about the NCLB um, application. Okay. Um, uh, maybe I, um, I, I wasn't sure whether to do it before or after your presentation, so I thought I selected before, maybe given the option again, I would do it afterwards. <laughs> There's always next year. <laughs> this is an annual uh, presentation, an annual report, um, in which uh, I uh, am seeking public input on our uh, No Child Left Behind grant application. So the purpose of this report tonight is to provide the board and the community with some information regarding our grant application and to offer the opportunity for that public comment. Uh, the No Child Left Behind grant provides federal funding through the state to local districts for some very specific purposes. The funds are annual, although they have been decreasing over time. For example, about five or six years ago, there were six titles or six grants under the umbrella of the No Child Left Behind grant. Um, now there are two. And within each grant, the funds have been decreasing over time. So we want to make sure uh, that with these available funds, we get the most from these dollars, uh, while meeting the grant requirements, of course. The amount of funds the state receives depends on the census data, and then the amount we receive is based on our free and reduced lunch numbers. The first grant I'd like to talk about is called Title I-A. It is Basic Disadvantaged Program Granting. This year, the allocation, the preliminary alloc allocations that we um, have been um, told have been about $178,000. Title I-A funds must be used in the school or schools that have the highest free or reduced lunch population. A corner school is a school that has consistently received this funding and will continue to do so based on the numbers. These funds can only be used to supplement programming, not supplant programming. We're required to do a comparability report across the three K-2 schools each fall to ensure that the funds are being used in addition to, not instead of, local dollars. The funds currently are used for salaries, benefits, and supplies to assist students who are struggling in reading and math. It also funds professional development for those teachers and the funding also supports activities to assist parents as they assist their students or their children. 
The plan next year is to continue to use the funds for this purpose. Students are making gains. We have goals that we set every year. But there are more gains to be made. Uh, the bit of good news this year is we're receiving about $20,000 extra dollars for Title I funding, uh, which will allow us to expand the hours of the part-time staff Title I person. The state has received more funds this year. It's not a matter of our free and reduced lunch numbers going up. So we'll be using the funds to um, pay for three positions. One is a teacher, and the other two are ed techs, plus the supplies and professional development. The next grant is called Title IIA, Improving Teacher Quality. And our preliminary allocation this year is about $57,000. Now these funds can be used in any of our schools and are for the purpose of helping teachers get better at teaching. The past few years, the majority of the funding has been allocated to the middle school as students were not making adequate yearly progress, according to our test data. We made this decision based on a review of the performance data across the district to see where it was needed the most. These monies provide teacher training, the majority of which was focused on improving students' critical reading skills across all content areas at the middle school. Some of the funds also helped us uh, to fund the new math curriculum training that took place at the middle school and at the high school. The plan next year, though, is to shift these grant funds to the high school. We plan to apply for the funding for a literacy coach position similar to the model at the middle school where the focus will be working with staff across all content areas specifically focused on reading skills. Now the public might wonder why these resources should go to the high school as it is recently ranked as an A school and the middle school a B school in the latest state report card rankings. I want to be clear, um, leaders here in Scarborough take a, have taken a deeper look at the data around this. The middle school has made gains as a result of the funding uh, and the students at the middle school have recently been performing at the 85% proficiency level in reading and continue to grow. The students at the high school are at the 65% proficiency level. So currently roughly 35%, over a third of our high school students are not proficient in the area of critical reading. So the state report card letter grades don't tell the whole school story. Also, the trend data we've been studying is also quite concerning. Looking at the U.S. News and World Report rankings, number 10 is good. We've been talking about that quite a bit. Last year, we were at number 7. And several years ago, we were ranked even higher. In March, if you recall, I presented high school PSAT and SAT data that indicated a trending downward toward the national average. So we're concerned. Given the current staffing needs at the high school, where we're still trying to recoup from positions lost, a position such as a literacy coach just couldn't be included in the mission critical budget for this year. Uh, but this grant provides an opportunity, as it did at the middle school. So similar to the success, very successful middle school model, this literacy coach will teach and assist teachers in learning how to better teach the reading strategies that all students need in order to be college and career ready, our district's goal. So in closing, I enthusiastically ask, I enthusiastically ask um, that the community get in touch with me. Uh, I welcome the input from now until the end of June, early July, I'll be busy working on this online grant application. I can be reached via email, um, or by phone, and I'm happy to meet with anyone who might be interested or have questions about this grant application. My email is on the website, uh, and uh, please contact the central office uh, to get in touch with me or to schedule an appointment. Thank you for your time tonight. And just for everyone, the phone number to the central office uh, would be 730-5000. No. Uh, oh, no, sorry, that's the high school. 4100. Sorry, 4100. Sorry, wrong number. 4100, 730-4100. Thank you. Thank you, Monique. <laughs> that concludes the superintendent's report. All right. That concludes the superintendent's report. We'll move on to the chair report. So I will start off by saying that there have been many activities going on throughout the district, end of the year type things, um, wrapping ups. Um, there have been some trips, educational trips that some of the students have taken. Uh, there's lots going on at the high school. I happen to have a senior graduating, so there have been a lot of events going on this week. Graduation is Sunday. 
at 7 p.m. at the Cumberland County Civic Center, you must have a ticket to enter the door. So don't just show up and think you're going to get into graduation. Uh, Friday evening is the eighth grade recognition and their dance. That starts at 6 p.m. at the high school in the gym. So there we go. All right, now um, on to the Wentworth Building. We are nearing substantial completion, which is extremely exciting. I'm sorry that Anne Mary left and is not going to have the uh, benefit of this information that I'm sure she wasn't aware of. Um, <laughs> the classroom wings are ready for the furnishings, and in the technology, the network rooms are being uh, readied for power to hook up network systems. That's the PA, the security, and cameras. Uh, and the interactive whiteboards are being installed. Flooring, woodwork, and painting are complete. Uh, the cooler and freezer that are in the kitchen area are getting ready to be turned on. Those should be on by mid-June so that the food and anything that's over at Wentworth currently will be transferred over. So we are moving our goods there. So um, playground equipment is being uh, installed at the moment or beginning to be installed and then the rest will be moved at the end. Uh, move out and clean out of the old Wentworth continues in order to provide uh, in time for the demolition. And then the floor waxing should be complete uh, by the early next week. So that is what's going on over at Wentworth. Lots of things going on at the K-2 schools. I know that they have their end of the year second grade little celebrations that are going on. I know that at Wentworth as well, there are things going on, so middle school has things as well, so there's portfolio shares and things, so if you do have students in the district or you're interested in what's going on, please check the website, go to the home page, you can choose the school that you're looking for, and all their events are typically right there. Um, if you do have other questions, you can always call central office, so um, I know some of our fellow board members have been at some of the other events, and uh, so please stay aware and as uh, Dr. Entwistle had mentioned, we had a very disappointing uh, decision last night of uh, the budget from the town council. So we will be addressing that shortly um, and there'll be more to discuss there. That is the end of my chair report. Uh, this evening we have no students representatives report, but I should add that um, the board does have something for Marissa Agar, who is our senior representative who's graduating. Um, so I, we appreciate everything that she did with us this year. She was with us for one year, um, and we will make sure that this gets to her. We, we appreciate everything that um, she offered for us, and we hope that she'll come back and tell us what she's up to next year uh, after she goes off, and I believe she was doing a gap year. so. Um, I think we'll, we'll hear about what's going on in her world. So we hope that um, we gave her some ideas and some thoughts for herself for the future, and um, she shared things with us that kind of opened our eyes up to things that, what the students think. So mm -hmm. um, again, very appreciative of having um, members from the school that come here, the student reps. So we'll, we'll look forward to meeting our new student rep then that is probably a rising junior. So that's it. So now we have our new business, and that would be our minutes of May, uh, well, I guess I'd ask the will of the board. We have three sets of minutes, correct? So we have May 1st, May 8th, and May 15th. Do you want to take them individually, or would you like to take them as a group? I'll look for a motion from someone. Uh, move approval of the minutes of May 1st as printed. Okay. Second. All right. Any corrections? Comments, omissions, errors? None? Seeing none, all in favor of approval as presented? Seven. So moved. Move the acceptance of the minutes of May 8th as printed. Second. Um, hey. I, I, I have a, uh, I have a talk to Ms. Ketty about uh, there was some omission in there, and uh, she is going to um, um, uh, modify that. Okay. And there were a little issues as you know needs to be I would like to be on record to say. Okay. Thank you. And so we'll bring these back forward then. So we'll table the minutes for May eighth then? Yes. Okay. So we're gonna table the minutes for May eighth. All in favor of tabling the minutes for May eighth. Seven. All right, so we'll put those on the side for 
Move approval of the minutes uh, May 15th as printed. Second. Okay. Any omissions, corrections, or anything that anyone wants to address? None? All in favor of approval as presented? Seven. Thank you. All right. Now we have uh, 9.4 and <coughs> 9.5. Yes. Um, 9.4 is presenting to the board um, for their approval to move to a second probationary year a number of uh, teachers and professionals. I'm pleased to say I had uh, the opportunity uh, mostly due to Kelly's good scheduling and me following my schedule uh, to spend time with every one of these uh, teachers and professionals, uh, the uh, leaders and uh, their colleagues, um, uh, the these uh, folks, uh, the colleagues that these folks have as well as their mentors have done an exceptional job. Uh, it's a very impressive group of second of uh, teachers and professionals moving to a second year probationary status, including uh, Jamie Deshanes, um, uh, Tracy Gallant, uh, Lois Grocky, Sybil Kipp, Lisa Larrabee, Maya Lena, Lindsay Mannion, uh, Kathy Mills, Elise Pelletier, Colleen Quattrero, Mindy Rathburn, Cassandra Salve, James Schoonover, Karen Silverman, Nathan Wentworth and Andrea Wood. I'd recommend um, approval by the board. Move to approve. Second. All right. Any questions, comments? All in favor of approval as presented? Seven. Thank you. So moved. And uh, ditto uh, in terms of the high quality and good work done by uh, colleagues, mentors, and school leaders with those that I'm recommending the board approve to move to a third year probationary status. And this is new, new for us. Uh, folks are moving on. There was a legislative change, as you all know. Um, that includes uh, John Aceto, uh, Judith DiMucci, Claudia Dolan, Lauren Fine, Aaron La um, Landry Fowler, Jennifer Libby, Abby Manchester, Melissa Martinez, um, Diana Mitrode, Koku Nayanutsi, uh, Toby Walsh, and Daniel Willey. Um, and I've had the pleasure of spending time with all of them as well. It's been terrific. Move approval. Second. Questions? No. All in favor of approval as presented? Seven. Thank you very much. We uh, welcome everyone back for that new third year probationary period and their second year probationary period, and we wish them well. And We'll probably hear more about them later. All right. We have nine well, points. Just in, your, in terms of your point, hearing about more about them later, what we do like to do is to bring our teachers who are in transition from, from probation to continuing contract and introduce them to the board and to the public. It's a big step for us. Uh, it's a big step for them. And it's another um, item that's worthy of celebration and recognition. This year, of course, because we've moved to a three-year uh, cycle, uh, we have no one who's moving to continuing contract at this point. All right. Thank you for clarification on that. So we have 9.6, which is the authorization um, to the superintendent for summer hires. So I would like to propose a motion to authorize the superintendent to execute contracts with new employees during the summer months of 2014, when otherwise waiting for school board meetings will jeopardize securing the employment of the best new staff available. All authorizations will be brought to the school board at the next regularly scheduled meeting. And for those of you that have been on the board in the past, you're quite aware of that's what we've done uh, previously. Those of you that are new to the board, um, that has been our practice in the past. So, Second. All right. Uh, any comments, concerns, questions? Anything? Okay. All in favor, then, of, approval the motion, of, of approving the motion as presented for summer hire authorization to the superintendent? Seven. Did you have your hand up, Jackie? I just want to make sure. I did. Okay, thank you. I just wanted to. Very quick. That I, I missed it. I blinked. I missed it. Um, okay, so 9.7, 7, we have a um, letter that everyone received uh, from 
the uh, waiver for facility charges for the Maine Cancers Program. And uh, it, would, it would be my recommendation to the board that you would move approval of this waiver for s facility charges for the Maine uh, Cancer, Maine, Maine, Children. Maine Children's Cancer Program. And that's an event that's on <coughs> September 27th. Move approval. Second. Okay. Um, questions, comments? I'll, I'll make one. This is a, scrap, a scrapbooking event that has been going on for a number of years here, and it's actually a, an employee of the um, planning department who puts this on each year and, I guess, raises um, a, a fair amount of money. So, obviously, um, something that's local and, and sticks close to home and is for a good cause, and obviously our cause is children. So, somebody else? And that's reason. what I was going to say, that, that Robin has, has been very faithful with running this workshop and raising money for Maine Children's Cancer. And I can't think of a better way to spend money in this town because it is a wonderful, wonderful program. <coughs> and I'm going to support it. Okay. Anybody else? Then um, the motion's on the table. All in favor of approval as presented to facility waive the charge. Seven. Thank you very much. If you could please, I think Kelly, would you let them let her know that that's been approved? Um, thank you very much. Next, we have 9.8 <sighs> concerning the uh, budget and what occurred last night with the town council. So I would like to make a motion that we approve by order of the town council that we, the Board of Education, reduce the overall budget by $324,000 for a new school gross of $42,165,315. The Finance Committee has not yet determined where these cuts will come from, as we are still deliberating, but these cuts will definitely be painful. And it's disappointing. Do I have a second? Second. Comments, questions? Chris. Uh, well, first I'd like to thank the chair for making the motion in the first place. Typically that's the responsibility of the finance chair. Um, um, and I do want to thank my fellow board members for their efforts the past couple of weeks. I have been out of, out of town on work and was unable to participate. Um, however, through the wonders of new technology, I was able to watch the proceedings last night from uh, the Netherlands, where I was um, quite a bit difference in time, but um, certainly was, uh, I don't want to say worth the effort by any stretch of the imagination, but it was certainly good to be able to witness that. So. Um, uh, I'm also very uh, tired because I arrived this uh, just this afternoon, so I haven't prepared any remarks. Um, and uh, I'm, everybody's cringing because they're always afraid when I go rogue. <laughs> everybody's going to sit on their hands. Um, I, I in, in, in good faith, cannot philosophically support this effort. And... Um, I, while I, 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 I cannot um, publicly oppose and will not publicly oppose this, this budget, um, I, I was very sincere both individually and I think as a board when we presented to the council and the public what we thought was right, what we thought was important, what we thought was appropriate. Um, we didn't want to go and continue to go backwards. It was very important for us to, at the 3.2% level to try and main, maintain some of that forward momentum. Um, in my comments to the council the last time, I, I pointed out that if we were going to go to the 2.9%, which is what the council chose, that we would be impacting programs and it would be difficult. And I have a very difficult time supporting that process. So um, I don't expect that to make much of a difference. I think we'll work, uh, we'll continue to work hard. Um, uh, the, some of the comments that I heard last night, both from the public and um, some public officials were rather 
uh, disheartening, uh, especially to suggest that we collectively as a board are not working hard and that we're not looking at things, that we're not doing a good job. Um, personally, I've, uh, I and at, at least at a minimum the Finance Committee have spent four months relentlessly going back and forth and ferreting through line by line of this budget over and over again, more than once. You elected us to do that. That's our responsibility. That's our job. Uh, I can confidently and comfortably sit in front of you and in front of anybody in the public and say, I think we did our job. But it's not up to us. And it's a process. And we have to honor the process. Um, I think we have a lot of work to do. That goes without saying. Um, disappointment is a word that's been kind of thrown around a lot. Um, I, I, I think frustration is probably another good one. And, uh, I, you know, without... Um, trying to, to uh, pontificate, if you will, on what we need to do and how we need to do it. I will just say that uh, I cannot support this motion, and I'll, I'll leave it at that. But um, we will continue to work forward and try and make progress uh, as, as best as we possibly can. But we can't do that as seven individuals or even collectively as a board. This is a philosophical debate that this town has to come to grips with. And we're running out of time if we haven't run out already. And I'll leave it at that. So thank you. Thank you. Kelly? Um, <clears throat> disappointment is a word that you could use. Um, if there wasn't so much steam shooting out of my ears all day, I could have looked in a thesaurus to find exactly what I'm feeling. Um, <clears throat> we are required by the council to cut the dollars from the budget, so we will somehow. It hasn't been decided where it's coming from because literally we cannot figure out where to cut programs. They were already essential. Um, <clears throat> it is incredibly frustrating that we were unable to convince the council of our sincerity when we said it the first time. Um, I cannot urge school supporters enough to come out and vote on Tuesday. If we are forced to make further cuts, um, it's an impossible task. There is literally, I have no idea where that money would come from. Um, it's so important that people pay attention, ask the questions if they don't know, and trust that we have the answers and we'll give them to you when asked. Um, <clears throat> it was frustrating to have people banging down our doors virtually this weekend asking for defense of line by line of the budget when it's work we've been doing for months. It's impossible to recreate it in four days. Um, I feel the same as Chris, and last year that was me. I didn't vote for the further reduction, all the while knowing it's required. So we are literally the rock in the hard place. There is, there is no room left. We're getting squeezed. So um, because we are forced, I will vote for the reduction, but it is under protest. Jackie. First of all, I want to uh, thank my fellow board people and, and the administration and the leadership of Dr. Antwistle for getting us this far. We don't lie to the public. And if people in this town don't know me, then I'm sorry but that they don't, but neither I, nor any member of this Board of Education, has ever been a rubber stamp for any superintendent. And if you even watch school board meetings, you would understand that. <coughs> or if you had ever attended a budget workshop, you would understand it. If you had watched the tape of the all-day Saturday affair and had listened to the questions asked, by members of this Board of Education, you would understand that we do not rubber stamp. We dig in. I have a question. 
because there there is a piece that has to be presented to the to Tony Justice tomorrow morning. The lines that are necessary that are for the voting. And that's mandated by the state of Maine. And is it my understanding that the total amount that we're considering that is that we must reduce is being considered at the present time to be taken from regular instruction? No. The not answer entirely. to that is no. Because not entirely. No. We have not come to that conclusion as the finance committee. We uh, decided that we needed some further deliberations because. And are you going to? We have not set the time yet, but um, that was sort of looking at Chris's schedule for tomorrow. I mean, I'll make every effort, you know, to to do to meet, even if it's you know, an but hour. Here's my dilemma. I am not a member of the finance committee, so I'm going to amend your motion to make certain that some of the reduction will come out of the line known as other instruction, which covers athletics and student activities. And I would ask that that amount not exceed 32,000, 32%, excuse me. And the reason I'm doing that, well, I can't discuss it until it's been seconded. Second. Did I hear a second from you, Jane? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, all right, so, yes. I've sat on this school board for more years than I care to remember sometimes. And we have not ever, in my tenure, do I recall us reducing anything out of an athletic or activities account. And we have taken just about all that I want to see taken out of instructional accounts, especially this year. And here's another fact. I don't recall a time when we have been in the midst of a budget and a budget has been approved by the town council and a projected mill rate was talked about that that mill rate was anything but less than the projection, projection when the mill rate was set, what is it, after July 1 or whatever it happens to be. And it's certainly never been more. It's always been less. So that is my amendment. I want to make it perfectly clear where I stand. And I want it perf made perfectly clear that I will make that defense before anybody who wishes to speak with me. Okay. Right. Other discussion on the amendment, Don? Well, I just wanted some clarification, Jackie. So. You're saying um, you don't want the other instruction line to exceed 32% of the total reductions that we're making? Of the, of no, the, I, of the I don't want to exceed 32%, not to exceed 32% of that line. So the line that says <coughs> currently $1,013,500. Oh, yeah, oh, okay, okay. So you're saying there, there as was we a move discussion. Forward, there was a discussion prior to our meeting. I sat in on the finance committee, and there was discussion around uh, the whole thing, quite frankly. Mm -hmm. And that's how I have come to that okay. conclusion. Mm -hmm. Chris? Um, I, I appreciate the spirit of it, and I think it does, it does speak to the dilemma that we're facing as certainly as a finance committee, as a board, and as a district. Um, the reason that I, I am hesitant to support the motion is because we are debating, I guess from a philosophical standpoint, to the level 
that we want to take what from where. So I'm a little hesitant to support something that puts um, restrictions on our ability to compromise for the overall deductions, but I appreciate the spirit that it comes from, um, and I, um, I, I think it's the right approach. I just don't like the specifics of the 30% because I think that that does oblige us to work in a certain way. No, I said my motion is not to exceed. I, 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 that's clear. I understand that. Um, I, again, I just as a finance committee, perhaps we feel 30% is not adequate enough. Perhaps we need more. I, I don't know that. So that's why I don't want to, I, 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 and I'm the last one that would advocate for that, as, which was hopefully clear to my fellow board members at, at the earlier meeting. However, I, I don't want to put this board in a position that we're, we're forced into a decision. I want it to be a, a, an open debate and a discussion, and I'd like the weight of the board to be carried. And, and I think it's important to, to, to go that way, so. Jackie, back to Jackie. Would the board feel comfortable without the 32% but simply designate that money must be taken from that line? That you'd be amending your your amendment. I understand you would that. Like to do that. Well, uh, well I want to make certain of two things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One that there is money to reduce other uh, other instruction. <coughs> yeah. Which includes the which includes curricular athletics and and co-curricular co -curricular. the activities. We exceed in those programs at the present time. I think every athletic team we sponsor has been in the playoffs at least once in the last two or three years, and multiple times for many. Our academic decathlon, thank goodness, is, is exceptional. And I'm sorry I'm so tired. It's just been a week, you know, of go, go, go. But I just don't think it is fair for us to have to handicap our students by not having Spanish, by not having art, by not having music, and still give them a full program of athletics. It isn't fair. And one thing I've always tried to do is be fair. I've been a coach. I've been an official. I go to as many games and activities as I can get to. I am a huge, huge supporter. But I support academics more. Jane. Okay. Did you have your... Um, yeah. I saw the hand, hands on. Oh, I'll, I'll work my way around. I won't... You know okay. me. Okay. I won't okay. let, let somebody go without speaking. Okay. Okay. Um, you know, last year I um, support, you know, always know the town is not giving the school enough support and I really stand out and advocate for it and uh, I thought with my finance background I can, you know, come to help out and uh, I thought maybe we can do something and find something, you know, to, to make it easier for everybody. And through the budget process, I realize it's so difficult when you have such limited resources. And, um, you know, everything is just tied up. And from the beginning, the leadership proposed budget to now, we see a lot of deduction cuts from the academic side. And, you know, our school have one of the larger class sizes. and. You know, we lack of supplies and textbooks. So I think at this point, it's wherever we cut, it's going to hurt. And mm -hmm. I really think, you know, we need to look everywhere. So, and when it comes down to extracurricular activities, I know it's uh, supported by a lot of people in town. And, uh, and I have to blame the parents, you know, I do. Because if we had enough parents, go to vote on the first budget and we would be in a much we won't be here today 
and that's a problem. And if our parents don't advocate for our kids, I heard there are 20% family in town that have kids, and we are doomed. As you know, we. So, I should. I think so. The amendment. The reason I still have a little bit. I problem with it. I may not support it because I don't think that will be enough. Um, I put a number together, and I think we do need a little flexibility as a finance community to discuss it more. But um, you know, but it's it's going to you know uh, it's uh, it's tough, and we don't want to do it, but we have to. So, and uh, that's my. And I'm very sad about about that. So thank you. All right, I'm going to ask Jackie just because I, I did see your hand up again. Did you wish to amend your amendment that you put forward with the the 32 percent and say that you just want to make sure that some amount comes out of that? I don't know if All right. let, let me. But that's your May I, choice. You seconded. Would you withdraw yeah. your second, and I'll oh, reword uh, it. Sure, I would. Thank you. I second so we can discuss it. So. Then I will reword the motion to say that I, my expectation is, no, I move, amend the motion, that a significant amount of the reduction, of any reduction, would include monies from other instruction. Do I have a second? For Jackie's reworded to move that a significant amount of any reduction will include monies from other instruction. I can second that. Okay. <coughs> Questions, discussion, comments? Oh, I see hands up all over. Um, Jody has not had an opportunity, so if you wouldn't mind for a moment, Me Kelly, first. I'll. I'll um, I just wanted to say, sort of piggybacking on what Jackie had, had said, that the fact that we're having this discussion, I think, shows to everyone that having to meet the requirement and the reduction put forth by the town council, there are no winners. Um, we are sitting here discussing whole programs or whole athletic programs to save the average taxpayer $15 a year, 30 cents a day. So simple math and, and business sense, it, they've thrown out an arbitrary number. We would be fired in the business world if I said, we're cutting whole programs out of this company to save us $15. It just doesn't make sense. And so by putting that back on us, we are now putting the kids in the middle. And they're the ones that ultimately are going to lose for $15 a year. And I'd like to just add one little thing to that. Um, much of the situation that we're in is not the fault of the school department or necessarily of the town. Um, it would be that over the course of the last several years, we have lost 32% of our revenue to the school department from the state. So we, you know, that, that's what has put us in this position in the department. It's, it's not that we're out there spending money like drunk sailors or whatever people like to say out in town, and then we have to stand here and we can't refill <coughs> anything because we don't have that opportunity that's not provided to us. So um, it's that's a lot of what this is. So, Donna. Yeah, I, I just feel a great deal of disappointment today. Um, very frustrating that we're, we're having to have this discussion. Um, you know, if, if a hundred and, we only had 157 people who didn't vote for us, that parents who could have come out. It's really important that parents get involved. There's so much new coming in education. You need to be here. You need to make yourself aware of what's happening. But for me, the 157 votes was what the council felt equated to $325,000. <laughs> I, 
Good point. It's, it's incredible that that many thousands is what stands for 157, the lack of 157 votes. It, the, that's a lot of money for a school system to have to have to swallow. We have, you know, we voter apathy. Uh, I'm concerned about the rumors and the hearsay, the inaccurate information that is out there. But also, the two biggest words for me was respect and trust. We are elected by this town to do a job. Here sits two masters in business, a master of degree in the arts, a master's in communication, numerous education masters, two business, arts, and one lawyer. We did not take this job lightly. We knew what we were undertaking. We fulfill the requirements the state places on us. We, we are responsible for the laws that are placed on us to enforce in our schools. And then we're up against the lack of funding. And unfortunately, it's born on the backs of the children in these classrooms next year, whether it be through sports or whatever programs get cut. That's where that sits. And it's unfortunate. I think people have to get active and get involved and know what's going on. That's it. Thank you, Donna. Kelly. I promise I'm not going to talk a lot more because, like last night, I have a really sore throat tonight. I'm literally sick of talking about the budget. <laughs> um, I can't support Jackie's amendment because <clears throat> the Finance Committee that I also sat in on had literally like 38 minutes to talk about how to cut $300,000 plus. I just feel like it needs more discussion. It needs more, I don't know what, magic to come out of the numbers. I don't, I'm blessedly not on the Finance Committee, but I want to give the Finance Committee all the opportunity to look in every dark, dusty corner to see if they can find a dime under a chair. I don't know what, but um, <clears throat> our athletic teams have done very well over the years. They're heavily booster funded, heavily supported by parents, and I would wager to say, or at least speculate, that a lot of the teams <clears throat> that um, have won state championships repeatedly, those kids um, are paid for by their parents involved in club sports year-round. Mm -hmm. So it's not because we're funding the athletics to the hilt. It's because the parents are that committed to it and the kids are that committed to it. So I don't want to tie the hands of the finance committee if there is a miracle in Kate's spreadsheets that can find money someplace else. I am sure there is not. But I don't want to say that it has to come from one place or it has to come from here. I just want... I want there to be more time to talk about it. So that's my stance on that amendment. Chris. Well, as much as I would like Kate to produce some fairy dust <laughs> and just <laughs> sprinkle it and make it all go away, I don't think that's going to happen. But um, I, I'd like to qualify some of the, some of the uh, or at least qualify my position as the finance chair. Um, I, I do advocate strongly, philosophically, for extracurricular activities. However, nothing in this budget is sacrosanct. And that was the point that I was trying to make earlier. I, I think the, we really do need some time to deliberate what's fair and equitable. I think everything needs to be on the table. I think it needs to be an intelligent discussion with talking about ramifications and consequences um, across the board. So um, I, can, I can assure the, this board that um, everything will be looked at. It has to be looked at. The real question isn't what we're, where we're going to look. It's, it's how much do we think is fair from what area. But everything is going to be under scrutiny. It has to be, unfortunately. That's where we're at. When we're talking about increases, it's very easy to say, well, more should go here than there. Those are, 
those are uh, fairly easy things to compromise on. But when we start doing subtractions and taking aways, then we start getting into some real emotion and some real philosophical challenges. And, and I would thank uh, Kelly for um, hopefully giving us a little more time as a finance committee. We don't have an endless amount of time. We, time is unfortunately of the essence. We have to get something to Toady, and um, we have to be able to back that up and, and agree to that collectively, or at least a majority of us do. And um, so we, we've got a lot of work to do in the next couple of days, but I, I thank the board for having faith in our process and trust that we will do the best we can and get you something that's that's reasonable and something that we can agree to. Jane. Um, I, I think I uh, won't agree with uh, Chris. We need a little more time as a finance committee to look at everything. However, I do want to thank um, you know Jackie's effort to you know to try to open you know let's not look at the extracurriculum. Let's look at these activities in the effort because I still believe that our schools are here mainly to educate our kids. Uh, you know the essential core component is academics. If we are not funding our academics at the institutional level, our kids is not going to be well prepared and to go forward and for college and career ready. And so I really think the extracurriculum is somewhere we do have to look at. I know it's funded a lot by the parents. However, um, you know, do we need to have 14 sports in our school? Or so we need to have, you know, I think when you talk about equality, you know, I always talk about, I think is having a PE class is everybody gets a chance to play is more equitable than, you know, a few students doing one sports. So I want to, you know, just sit, say I really think we should look at that aspect and I support um, Jackie, the idea in that sense. Of course, we you know we need to give a little bit you know deeper um, study before we make a decision as a committee. Yeah. Okay, and I would like to just make one comment here, um, and then I'll take a last look down the rows here and see if anybody else wishes to speak. But it just occurred to me that I should mention this. Um, since the original town manager's budget was presented March 26th of this year. There has been a total reduction of the school budget of $1,606,610. Let me repeat that one more time for everybody. $1,606,610. That's a lot of money. And we're looking at more. Kelly? I got a cough drop, so I have a couple more minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I thought of another thing, that there's a lot of talk about the municipal side has a zero. They kept a flat funding this year. They can generate revenues. They can increase costs of beach passes. They can increase costs of fishing licenses, or I don't know if they give those or not, but um, boat launch passes, everything goes up. The school department does not have the luxury of generating revenue. One of the very few ways we can generate revenues, and we have, and nobody likes it, is participation fees in sports and co-curriculars. So we are already taxing the parents and participants of um, the co-curriculars and the sports. And I am all for core mission of schools, academics are absolutely the essential, and if it has to come out of there, it will be sad, but it will, I understand that that's what has to be done, but I, it's another reason why I just want more time, um, even if it's just overnight, for people to rest and decide what might be the best way to handle it going forward. Or I just might say this, or maybe not sleep again. <laughs> um, well, did okay. it last night. I can't do it again tonight, sorry. Okay. <laughs> I was talking about sleep. All right, so that being said, I've looked both ways. I see no one else. The motion on the floor currently is to move that a significant part of the any reduction will include monies from other instruction. The will of the board this evening 
on that motion. All in favor of approval as presented. Par this was the significant This one, is right? one, the yep. significant piece. All opposed? Six to one. That motion moves. So um, we will be having a significant reduction that will include monies from other instruction. So now the base now, motion. That the base motion we're back to. That the reduction of the three hundred and twenty four thousand for the new <coughs> school gross of forty two million one hundred sixty five thousand three hundred and fifteen dollars is approved. That was seconded. We've had conversation about it. All in favor of approval of that as presented. Can I say something else? Oh, sure. Sorry. Okay. Um, for, um, the, the reason, you know, first we have to do this, and, you know, I don't think any of us here really supports this. You know, make sure to clear. Also, you know, the reason I think we need to try to get this budget passed is the, the, the leadership do need to move on and start hiring and prepare for the next school year. And we don't want any more reductions. So even though none of us are happy, but we want to, you know, this is the probably the most practical way to do it, or we are just forced to do it. So, so when we say yes to this budget, don't think we are really ex happy about it or support it. I don't think any of us really support it, but we still have to do our job. So that's all. Thank you. So all in favor of approval of the motion of reducing our overall budget by order of the town council of the $324,000. That's just half a vote. Okay, so we have six and, a, six and a half in favor. I'm opposed. Yeah, I thought so. So, and one opposed. So the motion moves. All right. Oh, we have committee reports this evening. Jackie, shall I start down at your end? Oh, Lord, let me get my... Would you like me to start at Chris's end? Sure. Chris. Ibid. Yeah, let's see. Um, we've been meeting regularly whether um, uh, to get where we're at. Uh, we have to sit down and schedule our next emergency session with the Finance Committee between now and the next couple of hours or days. Um, so that will be coming, and I will be sure to include everybody on the board as well. If you're available, you, your, your discussion is certainly welcome and, and, and encouraged. Um, and then ultimately, we'll, we'll hopefully be able to move forward. Okay. okay. You have one other thing that you participate in, but I believe it's over for the year. You and I share the duty, the paths, oh, the, and, and are we still doing that? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, actually, I think. Uh, Mr. Creech was just, was that, was the recognition ceremony already done? Last I was, week, yeah. It, yeah. Last week, right? The last week? Yeah. Okay. Um, and I believe we had two, was it two, two students, or how many students do we have that were? Recognized? Yeah. It, no, recognized, because I think you had, didn't you have to present? Yes. Okay. So we had, um, yeah. Um, and, um, you know, they, they just continue both at Vo at Westbrook and at Portland to do um, great outreach to the, to the uh, local communities. And I think it's a good model of, of how collectively we could work together similarly on the lines of Sebago Alliance. I think it's a good model and it allows us to, um, it gives the kids great opportunities and it also allows us to hear from other districts as well of how they're doing things and get some new ideas as well. So. Perfect, thank you. But we're done for the year, sorry, I believe. Thank you, yes. Um, Jody, you had a business? Uh... Yes, we had a council of um, business and school partners this morning. And it's a great group of, of business owners here in town and, and throughout the state that come together um, with some of the leadership to talk about ways to incorporate our students with business opportunities. And um, I think a lot of great ideas came out of that meeting this morning. Great, thank you. Kelly. Policy has been on hiatus until the budget passes. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Uh, Donna, 
um, teacher evaluation? Well, the teacher evaluation team has not been on hiatus. <laughs> they have been working for over a year now for a law that goes into effect the year after next. So the latest work that they have been doing is that they have to come up with a document to send to the state by August. Now the state said that they would be sending a model back to the towns so that they would know what they want. Well, the model is put on hold now until all the towns send their recommended <coughs> ideas of how to evaluate everyone, which will be received in August and in the fall, the state will send back to the towns the model. And they'll send it back to the towns with a copy of the model we presented and tell us where to make the corrections. Hmm. Perfect. There'll be no additional funding for the kind of training that needs to happen for everyone in order to, to do this whole new uh, evaluation system. Um, it just, it's, it's just, it's incredible. We ask our staff to do hours after their work day, to spend summer days, to spend vacation days, and we give them lunch. That's what they get for the extra hours that they spend. Um, they're doing an amazing job. I'm just so proud of everybody in, that's particularly involved, you know, Jill, and j just everybody who's putting all this extra time into this to make it possible that we will have a pilot program in the fall uh, that we'll do during, during the course of next year, and that will um, get us on our way. So that's where we're at with the evaluation team. Thank you very much for that report out. Wish the state would send us some money to do this. <laughs> um, hmm. All right, Jane. Uh, the long-range planning committee, we um, have Christine, Chris, and me, we have been very occupied by the budget process. We are also the member of the finance committee. So we looking forward to see the second part of the study by the Hermans <coughs> next Monday. So, so we will try to see what we can do, you know, from the facility side to you know, get improvement or efficiency. I hope we, you know, we will work very hard to look at that, that aspect, so. Um, and before I continue on down to Jackie, I'll go back to Donna for a moment because the communications committee, I, I was remiss. Uh, well, of course, in the past two me. weeks, um, although we haven't had meetings, we've been on Facebook every day, numerous times a day, responding to comments and questions, clearing up some of the myths and, um, you know, trying to make information accurate for people. So if you haven't logged on yet to Scarborough Board of Education, Facebook play page, please do so and like us. Like us, we want to get 200 or more likes. We're close. We're, we're really close. Just share us with your friends. Tell everybody you know about us. Really? Jackie, yes. Well, the negotiations team has been meeting and meeting and meeting. We met yesterday with the support staff and we met today with the bus drivers. Uh, both meetings went extremely well. Uh, both groups have agreed to meet through the summer if necessary. Uh, we have set up subsequent <coughs> meeting dates on Friday next, which is Friday the 13th. Oh, we will have another arbitration session on the custodial contract. So, uh, summer is not going to deter us from the negotiations, except that Mrs. Sizemore has to take vacation time and go to meetings and workshops, so it kind of cuts into when we can meet. But I believe that that's the only time that she's able to take her vacation, so oh, I'd so like what? to pull, vacation? I want to pull the bus out from vacation or, or, <laughs> off the top of Joanne, so um, all right, yeah, well. Hopefully you can get a day in. Um, but she's getting lunch, though, right? 
<laughs> yeah, we are providing lunch, though. Providing <laughs> lunch. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. So there are no other committee reports. Um, next on our agenda is a motion to go into executive session pursuant to 1 MRSA Section 405-6A to discuss the superintendent evaluation for 2013-14. Do I have a motion from the board? Before? Oh, sorry. I, I wanted to make an announcement, and there's no place for me to do that here, but uh, at, at the uh, awards evening, the uh, Marissa Egger was awarded a scholarship for her contribution to the South Portland Robotics Team. Lego Robotics, yes. Mm -hmm. And she the gentleman who was a teacher at South Portland High School came in and presented and said that she was an absolute a engineering asset mm -hmm. to that effort and praised her highly. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted you to know that and, and the public to know that we had a student who was so interested in that program that she went over and helped out South Portland. And they were very successful, by the way. And I wish we had one here. <laughs> <laughs> OK. We have it. So um, the will of the board then with, uh, do we have a motion first? Do I have a first on that? First motion to? To go to executive, go to executive session. session for OK. The do I have a second? Second. OK. So we will not be returning to public session. I will make that very clear right now. We will not be coming back here. So. After I Maybe bang this gavel, upstairs. you're all free to go. Oh, I forgot the vote. Oh, all in favor of adjourning <laughs> executive session. Seven. Thank you. You know, normally we are we time for us to go at home. At yeah. nine o'clock. <laughs> oh, sorry, sir. Whatever. How is that? Do you, how is it?